Hello students, today we are going to solve the JEE main 2014 physics paper and here we are to discuss code G. So let's begin with and the first question in the physics for code G is question number 31 and it says when a rubber band is stretched by a distance x it exerts a force this much. The work done in stretching the unstretched rubber by L. So basically the question is from work energy power and more precisely we got to calculate work done and this is happening in 1D. So let's begin the solution part. The work done straightway will go integral f dx because we are interested only in one dimension and this comes out to be integral ax plus bx square dx and the question is to find the work done in stretching the unstretched rubber by L. That means x is the elongation that begins from 0 to L and therefore the total work done on simple integration it's going to be a L square by 2 plus b L cube by 3 and by the way that will finally lead to option number D. So now we'll go to question number 32. All right, students. The next question, question number 32 is from permanent magnet and it says the coercivity of a small magnet where the ferromagnet gets demagnetized is 3 into 10 raised to the power 3 ampere per meter. This is H, the magnetic field intensity, what you draw in the hysteresis loop. So the current required to be passed in solenoid of this much length and this many number of turns so that magnet gets demagnetized. So it's basically that permanent magnet is kept inside the solenoid. So the solenoid will produce the magnetizing field and we need to demagnetize that particular magnet. So the solution part comes here, the coercivity is this much, that's H and if end effect is neglected in solenoid, H can be written as N times I. So it's something like this, the solenoid is quite long and here lies a small magnet and we want to demagnetize by applying field obviously in opposite direction and for this reason the end effects of the solenoid can be well neglected. So H that has to be produced is N times I this one is in the standard unit H is 3 into 10 raised to the power 3 N the number of turns per unit length so that's 100 per unit length is 0 0.1 and the current I. On calculation, I comes out to be 3 ampere, which is very clear. So this leads to option number D. Let's proceed for the next question. All right, let's go to question number 33. And question number 33 has been set from current electricity. It says in a large building there are 15 bulbs of 40 watt. So right from the solution part, let me say 5 bulbs of 100 watt, 5 fans of 80 watt and 1 heater of 1 kilowatt. The voltage of electric mains is 220 volt, the normal one. And we require the minimum capacity of the main fuse of the building will be. Now all of us know that the household wiring is in parallel. So every unit that we have discussed here will be getting a supply of 220 volt. But let us see how much is the wattage consumption of the building. There are 15 bulbs of 40 watt. So that will be 15 into 40 watt. That comes out to be 600 watt. 5 bulbs of 100 watt. So 5 into 100 watt and that comes out to be 500 watt 5 fans of 80 watt 5 into 80 
and that comes out to be 400 watt and finally a heater of 1 kilowatt so 1 into 1000 watt this is 1000 watt so total this much is the what is consumption and you could see that total what is consumption is coming out to be 2500 watt but this what is consumption will be via the main supply and you know every element is getting a total voltage of 220 into current i is the net current that is passing in the building and that net current passes through the fuse wire so let's see how much is the current that comes so that is 250 by 22 it's very clear the value of current comes out to be 11 point something and the question has asked the minimum capacity of the main fuse of the building the minimum one the best possible option out of here would be d that is 12 ampere because the current flowing is 11 point something so the fuse wire should sustain at least this much value and for the given option 12 ampere holds true let's go to question number 34 All right, let's go to question number 34, which is from properties of bulk matter. An open glass tube is immersed in mercury in such a way that a length of 8 cm extends above mercury level. The open end of the tube is then closed and sealed and tube is raised vertically up by additional 46 cm. And we got to find the length of air column above mercury in the tube. Well, the liquid given is also mercury and atmospheric pressure has also been specified in terms of mercury. So calculation is going to be the simpler one. It is something like this. The picture is the mercury is here and it was an open tube and the open tube has 8 centimeter level above mercury so right now the pressure here is p atmospheric it is closed and sealed so the pressure would still be p atmospheric so it is said closed and sealed so still the pressure is p atmospheric and it is raised vertically up by additional 46 centimeter so somewhat now the situation would be this that the total length would be 54 cm against 8 cm what was initially and quite obviously you can verify the mercury would rise up to a certain level and the question demands the length of air column above mercury so let us call that this length is y and the cross sectional area this one let me call it as a the first thing is quite obvious although not stated the temperature can be assumed to be constant and that will lead us to Boyle's law where P1 V1 would be equals to P2 V2 so it comes P initial V initial is P final V final this is what we are writing for the air column as I said the liquid is mercury and the atmospheric pressure is also given in terms of mercury so writing initial pressure is very simple 76 do not mind of the unit that's going to be in centimeter initial volume that will be 8 into a a is the cross-sectional area the final one let's see how much is the final pressure you could see how much is the length that's the part we have to see this part quite obviously would be 54 minus of y so how are we going to write the pressure here that would be outside pressure is 76 minus of this much pressure so that would be 76 minus of 54 minus of y it's quite obviously but let me again repeat the pressure here is 76 centimeter of mercury and you go up so the pressure decreases minus of this length 54 minus y we reach here and this is now the pressure here 
that's a final pressure and the final volume quite obviously would be y multiplied by a and you could see that a and a gets cancelled length both side has been kept in centimeter so y is also going to come in centimeter you can go for a quadratic solving of y or very easily since it's a objective examination you can verify on hit and trial with the option given which very clearly the value of y comes out to be 16 centimeter so that was question number 34 we'll go to question number 35